Logitech's G Pro might just be the most popular gaming mouse ever created. Everyone knows that it is a high quality head clicker used by some of the biggest names in esports. And it's been that way since the day it came out. Unfortunately, there has always been one glaring issue with the G Pro and now Superlight. Most people simply aren't ready to spend $150 on a mouse. Luckily, we now have plenty of other options. Some are cheap, reliable mice. Others are the pricey QA riddled nightmare. But when it comes to price to performance ratios, there aren't many companies that can beat Pulsar. The X2 and X2 Mini are some of the best mice on the market right now, and they're cheaper than almost anything of similar quality. Many people even consider the X2 good enough to rival the G Pro and the Superlight. But is the X2 actually better? Okay guys, before we dive into the video, I will ever so quickly shill our merch. We've got tons of comfy t-shirts and hoodies in lots of colors. Be sure to check them out over on our page at thescore.com to get your own. Okay, so many of you may have not even heard of Pulsar until right now. And that's fair because all things considered, they haven't actually been around for very long. Pulsar is a South Korean company that released their first gaming peripherals back in 2020. They made a big name for themselves with affordable, hot swappable, and in some cases, even waterproof gaming keyboards. But the thing that really put Pulsar on the map was their X-Lite gaming mouse. It was the company's first foray into the mouse space, an ergonomic lightweight mouse with a solid sensor. The sensor's good, the, the shape, uh, the shape's nice. Uh, it was pretty light, I remember too. It just seemed like a wireless, super light, EC Zowie mice. You know, that's kind of what I wanted to try. But what really caught everyone's eye wasn't the shape. The initial X Lite was only 50 US dollars. And even when they released newer wireless versions, Pulsar managed to keep the price extremely reasonable. I do want to say though that this mouse is actually very incredible for $74.99. The price point really cannot be beat. And I do want to throw that out there out of the gate. Um, because this thing is really a beast for $74.99. For $80, this is a very solid wireless ergo shape. Um, if you want something that's light, pretty affordable and well performing, and you don't mind this uh, relatively just generic ergo shape, then I would say go for it. Ever since Pulsar's peripherals first hit the market back in 2020, their motto has always been affordable innovation. And as more and more people got their hands on Pulsar's keyboards and X lights, it became clear that they had achieved exactly that. But there was still one thing missing from Pulsar's mouse lineup they didn't have an ambidextrous option. As of late, the Logitech G Pro and more recently the Superlight have been king when it comes to ambidextrous gaming mice. They're lightweight, wireless, have an incredible sensor, and most importantly, Logitech's hallowed logo on them. But it is precisely the power behind that name that has made these mice pretty darn expensive. A brand new Superlight will leave a $160 hole in your pocket. It's a price that your favorite pros and content creators will pay no problem. But for a lot of us, that is just way too much. Thankfully, Pulsar knew what gamers wanted, and in August of last year, released their first ambidextrous mice. The X2 and X2 Mini quickly made waves within the peripheral space. Many people praised them for their quality and, of course, the extreme extremely reasonable price. I think overall build quality is great. Uh, the sensor, you know, they use all the top of the line specs um, daily. So, you know, like whatever the best sensor is at the moment, they put it on their mice. I do got to mention, I think what I like the most about them is price. They keep all that stuff under a hundred bucks and that's like, it's, it's big. They could easily say 130 for it and people will still pay 130, you know, cause it has top of the line specs. But I think them keeping it at $90 or, you know, 99, whatever it's at, it's, it's great. Some tech reviewers even went so far as to suggest that Pulsar's new mice might be better than the Superlight. But did Pulsar actually beat Logi when it came to their first Ambi mice? Well, we decided to find out for ourselves. Our sweet, lovely Valorant lover, Niall, managed to get his hands on both an X2 and an X2 Mini. And here's what he had to say. 
And now, the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. All right, so before I get into my review of the X2 and X2 Mini, I just wanna say a huge thank you to Lethal Gaming Gear for sending me both mice to test out. I really appreciate it, so make sure to go check him out. Now, this video isn't sponsored by Pulsar, so everything that I'm about to say is just my honest, unfiltered opinion. But before I get into my practical review, let's talk about the specs. The Pulsar X2 Wireless is a 56 gram ambidextrous gaming mouse with up to 70 hours of battery life. It's a similar shape and size to the Superlight with a slightly lower hump. I've heard some people say that the shape is similar to the XM1 and Zowie ZA13, but I don't own those mice, so I can't really say for sure. What I do know is that even when I compare it to my 10 Starlight Pro, which is a pretty flat mouse, the hump on the X2 is even lower. The bottom of the mouse has these big cutouts, which help reduce its weight to only 56 grams, and Pulsar even paints their PCBs so they match the color of each mouse. The DPI and power buttons are also located on the bottom. Both mice use a Pixart 3395 sensor, and as for the switches, the X2 and X2 Mini both use KLGM 8.0 switches, which feel nice and light. And here's how they sound. I didn't notice any pre or post travel on the side buttons and the scroll wheel feels high quality as well. The stock skates are honestly better than what you get from most other brands out of the box in my opinion. Although I've mainly been using a control pad lately, I think the X2s will perform well on just about any surface. So who exactly is this mouse designed for? Well, if you have medium to large sized hands, then the X2 medium that I have here will be a good option for you. Whether you use a fingertip grip or more of a claw grip, this mouse should work for most people. If you have smaller hands, then I definitely recommend recommend checking out the X2 Mini though. It's a bit too small for my liking, but it has the same internals as the X2 and performs just as well. All right, now let's get into my actual review. I started off by testing the X2 on my extra soft Artisan Hien pad and hopping on Valorant. Now, since the Pulsar is only 56 grams and both my Death Adder V3 Pro and Super Light weigh in at roughly 63 grams, I knew that the X2 wouldn't feel exactly the same out of the box. So to compensate, I lowered my sense by roughly 9% in game, which helped a bit, but I still felt like I didn't have quite enough control. If you remember my review of the 10 Starlight Pro a few months back, then you'll remember that I had a similar problem with that mouse. Since then, I've been looking for a slower control pad, and luckily I finally managed to get my hands on the one that I wanted. After unboxing a fresh Artisan Zero, I resumed my testing, and within a few days, I felt much more comfortable with my aim on the X2. I was once again fragging out like I was used to with my other mice. Three, two, oh, there we go. <gasps> no! Well. Not as bad. One behind, 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 long. Do one. The X2 works great for FPS games. Since the new Valorant episode dropped, I've been genuinely excited to play the game again, and so far I've loved my time with this mouse. But I've also been using the X2 for other stuff these past few weeks, like raiding on old school RuneScape, and it still didn't disappoint. And that's pretty f***ing important for a RuneScape degen like myself. Pulsar's software is also straightforward and easy to use. You can even adjust the debounce delay, although I personally didn't have any double clicking issues. If you're looking for a cheap, wireless, ambidextrous mouse with solid internals, then I would easily recommend the Pulsar X2 and X2 Mini. If you haven't already spent the money on a Superlight, then just buy this. And if you're someone who maybe bought the original G Pro and you're debating whether or not to upgrade to a Superlight, then I'd still recommend the X2. The shape doesn't feel exactly the the same, but it's familiar enough that it won't take long for you to get used to. Overall, I think Pulsar killed it. Even stuff like the cables, the adapter, and especially the packaging just look incredible. And at 100 bucks US for all the premium internals, the price really can't be beat. So if you're in the market for a new mouse, then maybe it's time to check out Pulsar's offerings. And that was the guy who actually knows what he's talking about. So it seems like Pulsar really did come through with the so-called affordable innovation their mice perform just as well, if not better than their pricier competitors. When we first started, you know, like with mice and stuff, you always had to pay the $150 premium, right? Like for the best stuff, right? If you wanted like the best, which at the moment was like Vibe Racer and Logitech, you gotta be ready to spend 160 after tax and all. So 
I think whoever's coming new to the hobby for a hundred bucks now, they <laughs> they can get a good bang for their buck. And Pulsar continues to step their game up. They've released a bunch of new color options, and the latest iteration of the X2 features optical switches and zero debounce delay. And honestly, this limited edition Bruce Lee model looks incredible. Pulsar has a hell of a lot planned for 2023. New versions of the X Lite, the X2, new keyboards, and even a new ES series mouse that features OLED displays on the bottom. And if the quality and price is anything like what Pulsar has already shown us, then I think we got a lot to be excited about. I'm really excited for this, uh, I think it's the X2H. I've been using a Zowie ZA for literally years and years and years, and I've never switched off the mouse ever. I am enticed, I'm tempted by Pulsar's new option. This could be the Zowie killer for me, it's possible, we'll see.